So let's talk about focus states. Focus is one of the most important features that enables users to use a computer with just a keyboard. Most style sheets will have this one piece of code that will cause major accessibility failure. And this is it. Yep, removing the outline. So let's go back just a bit. That would remove this outline, which is horrible. Don't ever do this ever. You should avoid doing this like the plague. Keyboard users will know what element they're interacting with because of the help of focus styles. So focus highlighting is only used for interactive UI elements like form elements and buttons. So we need to make sure that we keep that in there. Another thing we should always be thinking about is focus contrast. It's a guideline to have the color of your outline adhere to contrast standards as well. So if you look over here, we have an orange outline and that is definitely going to be accessible. There is enough contrast with that white background, but if you were to have a very, very light gray, that's just not gonna work. Next is to think about off-screen content in relation to focus. Keep in mind that sometimes we design content that is hidden off the screen, kind of like this menu over here in this example. Some of this content could be like hamburger menus, modals, etc. Sometimes when a user is tabbing through focus points, they can lose track because it could be highlighting something off screen. Could you imagine how confusing that could be for a user? If I was tabbing through something like this and I was picking up navigation items, super confusing. This would cause so much confusion and the user could lose track of what they're doing on screen. Speak with a developer about solutions around this. But if you're feeling comfortable enough, you know, you can do this easily with CSS or JavaScript. Next is modals. Modals can be an accessibility disaster when not done properly. When users tap through a modal like this, they should be confined to just the modal. They should never be focusing on content behind. So could you imagine if I was tabbing through modal title, the exit button, whatever contents within, on these buttons and then all of a sudden I tap through launch demo modal, I would be pretty confused and lost. So make sure you have that conversation as well with developers. Now hover states also apply to focus and hover states should be made accessible. Users should be able to tap through hover areas as they do with focus based areas because sometimes we actually hide certain interactions under a hover state. Think about Facebook and their reactions. You need to hover over that like button before you can see all the other reactions. But Facebook does a great job with making this accessible. You can actually tap through this as a focus state, which is amazing. Let's talk about click targets. Now, a big thing is Cards. Cards are used a bunch in products these days, and it's important to create accessibility friendly cards since they can get so complex with multiple states based on the type of interaction being performed. A really good example of how cards can be made accessible is through Google Inbox. Now, if you take a look at the, over here, this is Google Inbox, and this interaction is really great. So they assign specific focus stakes to the, <clears throat> so they assign specific focus states for the cards that the user has navigated to. So you'll notice that the person here is navigating to all these different cards. And then you can see that this is the card that they're currently on. The hover action is completed on focus. So the hover action over here for all the different actions you can take on an individual inbox item will be highlighted while you tap through which is also great. Now, another thing that people fail to realize is you don't necessarily need to make every single UI element on the screen tabbable or focusable. What Google Inbox does really well in this specific interaction is that only the actionable items are focused and not every other element in the card. So over here, you'll notice that only these primary actions are actually in focus in comparison to like all these other elements. Next is target areas. We need to 
make sure that target areas are large enough for users to select on a page. So some users have motor impairments and it find it hard to select smaller items. If we take a look over here, we'll notice that the mailbox has a larger tappable area. Same with what the edit button would be. And this is what I was talking about in the beginning around like different, um, that accessibility is greater for all. I mean, it, when you're on mobile, you want a larger tappable area and not even if you have a, a motor impairment. This just makes my life easier as a, just going through my mailbox. So keep this in mind just when you're designing in general. Now, I just wanna say that many of these solutions aren't very style specific, but they do all still affect us in some way, especially as designers. We always set out to build products that everyone can enjoy and use easily. Accessibility should be a part of the design process earlier and every UI element and every design pattern should be made accessible. And most importantly, you should always collaborate with your development team. Accessibility is something that all of us can work towards and do. And it certainly starts with design in terms of style, like contrast and labels and forms and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of what happens in terms of specifications will happen on the, the, on the development side. So it's always important to talk to developers because they're gonna have a much deeper understanding of what's really necessary. And they can really inform you and help you along the way. So that's accessibility.